Stuart, we are really pumped about this video today. Are we not? We are here for a very special holiday tour. It's the home of my friends Janie and Bill Dupree. We have been here before for a very, very popular small garden video called, was it called The Opposite of a Minimalist Garden? It, it was just so gracious of her to show us around her small garden with all of her signature touches. And now she's gonna do the same and show us her holiday home. The thematic is very much Southwestern because it's a, a vibe and um, kind of an aesthetic that we love here in the Southwestern part of the United States. Lots of Native American references, lots of turquoise, lots of silver, just lots of wonderful Southwestern beauty. So Stuart, what do you say? Let's do it. I, I know she coffee. even when, when I coffee. told her that we were going to become doing a house tour, she so graciously, oh, as she always yes. is, and asked me if Stuart and I would want hot coffee when we got here. William, Merry yeah, Christmas, coffee. sweetie. Good and, morning. And and so anyhow, what we're going to do because there's so much to digest here, there is so much to see. So we're going to, even though your home is how many square feet? A little 1850. over 8, 1850. 1850, and you downsized how many years ago? Oh, we've been here three years. Three years. So, but there is so much to see in this home, and I can't wait to show it all to you because it is so unique. It is so novel, but more importantly, it is so you. <laughs> it is so you and Bill. Really, really special yeah. vignettes that we're going to be showing you. And you know what? Let's just start somewhere. What is the most special special things that you have out for Christmas? Well, I love this piece over here on the entry piece. It is a little clay, made out of clay, that we found uh, a potter at the farmer's market in Santa Fe. Oh and gosh. she was making these little things and she didn't even know how much to ask for them. And so we bought several of oh these little angels, which I have shared with friends. And then we went back into her studio, which was in an adjacent rail yard building, and we found this oh my word. to go with it. So we had to have that to put them on. And then at one time, I had a collection of all the little um, churches, ancient old churches that we had visited in New Mexico. But unfortunately, when we moved, I got rid of, you won't believe this, but I did get rid of a lot of things. Oh my but goodness. I did keep this one because it is the little church from the Taos Pueblo. Uh, Bill's father lived in Santa Fe after he retired. He went to Santa Fe. He had collected Native American things beginning in the 1930s. Oh my word. And he had wonderful stories about trading with the Indians to get these things. And so he would intrigue us with these stories. And then he shared some of his collections with us. Yeah, yeah, a really special so, relationship. Yes. And I, 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 I know we we're here to concentrate on Christmas decor, but look at this necklace. Do, can I? You can touch and see <laughs> and feel, yes. Yes. And that is so beautiful. Well, I can, I, lots of you are out there coveting it, I bet. That is so distinctive. And you were telling me that you used to work with some women in New Mexico. It was a gentleman in Santa Fe, and he made the jewelry. I ran into him, I can't even remember where, and saw his things and loved them, and then went to his home and made a little pitch to him about how about sending me some things to Oklahoma oh my City. Goodness. And I used to have sales from my home of some of these different I, I, asked, I, I, I have asked Jenny before if there's anything she can't do because she's a gardener, she's a painter, she's a hostess, she's a jewelry designer. Most importantly, you're just an incredible human well, being. Thank you. Thank but you. I, I really think there is nothing you can't do. Now, as I look here at this sweet little vignette you've got right here, I also have to admire <laughs> 
What a great coat and hat rack. Well, there, of course, there's a story about everything, and that was at an estate sale. And I kept eyeing it and eyeing it. And I Is it metal? Yeah, it's metal, and I didn't buy it, but our friend Roger bought it. <laughs> oh, you all are familiar so... with our mutual <laughs> friend Roger. And yes. So I didn't think I had a place for it, but then I realized I had a corner you behind a corner. the front door. And so I called Roger and I said, Roger, <laughs> do you think you'd be interested in selling me that hall tree? Because he knew how yeah. much I loved it. And so he said, okay. I said, I found a place for it. For it. So well, anyway. Yeah, Roger is the king of estate sales. He is the king. And I, I, I have asked him to, to teach me some of his, his tricks. tricks. <laughs> but right now I've got, a lot, I've got a lot of stuff going on. And then this piece also looks very southwest. Is that a Spanish piece? It is uh, probably from Mexico. There used to be a company here in town called El Paso Traders mm -hmm, over mm -hmm. on May Avenue. And we were fortunate enough to pick up several things from them that just fit with our way of living. Yeah, yeah. It just perfect. works perfect. Yes. Well, it matches your style, but also it is very functional. But these little things are just so dear. I'm hesitant to even touch them because they look... They look so, so fragile. So let's come over here. And, you know, I just, I think a home without some kind of fire element in it mm -hmm. is hardly worth having, especially at Christmas time. <laughs> because I, I know I'm a snob that way, but I just, it's, it truly is a, a fire is the heart of the home and it makes, it seems so cheer, cheerless. That's what I tell my husband, without cheerless it. when there's not a fire going. In and the, you have a real fireplace. And we've got a real wood burning yes. fireplace in our kitchen. And I am the scullery maid. I am the one that is, Cleans it. <laughs> that is always cleaning it and bringing, and bringing in the wood. So you have all sorts of different little um, Christmas motifs yes. here. You've got you angels. You've got, oh, that Santa opens up. You've and got there's all sorts oh, of little Oh, look at that, Stuart, look. For the grandchildren, they used to come and when they were little and play with the little trees oh, and Santa. And don't we love just tiny things? Yes, and look they at this. love I figure if the grandchildren can touch them, so can I. That's look, right. Look at the little gingerbread. These are the Here's things the that make Santa. a Christmas home magical. So you have a thing for little box. Oh, look! There's more little things. Oh, my gosh. Okay, that would be our tip. That would be one of our tips. Take any kind of small boxes and put tiny... Little the things miniatures. in there, precious or not, for the grands. I'm going to remember that because I'm a, I'm a grand in training. Mm -hmm. I'm hoping in the next five years or so. Now, my aunt, who has passed away in 95, she went to Germany in the 1960s, and she brought back these are made out of wax. Oh, my word. These wax ornaments, and I've been able to take care of them all these years. And I hope that you don't store them in a hot attic in Oklahoma <laughs> in the summertime. Where no, do you store most? Because people are gonna to wanna to know in a, in, a, in a home that's been downsized, where do you store your Christmas treasures? And we have um, the big tubs, uh -huh. but things like this, these little things, I keep in the house. Okay, at all. In the buffet. And so they're safe and they won't melt yeah. or get destroyed right. that way. So, right. And then these are some arrowheads oh, yes. and spearheads. Uh, like I said, Bill's dad had been a collector for years. My husband has a beautiful collection Does that he? belonged to his grandfather. Yeah. And I bet there might, is there a rose rock hidden underneath? No, <laughs> underneath no there. the rose rocks have, let's see, I do have one out someplace. Um, possibly over on the Look coffee this table. This is a sweet, sweet and I have a thing this, for putting wreaths yeah, around. This came like that. That is just dear. And this is another estate sale find that is bronze with all sorts of little bugs and plants on it. Oh! So, you know, it goes right with your Christmas with all the little little things little that things. you have. Yes, yes, yes. And, it, and it speaks to the gardener in you. That's right. 
So you, you are a secondhand thrifter, estate sale person like I am. I think I'm going to have to start hitting the uh, retail yeah, shops. Yeah, Jenny was admiring uh -huh. my, my, my jacket, so we're going to have to go clothing thrifting sometime soon. And if any of you love Santa Fe as much as we do, then you might even recognize this snowy scene. The Inn at the Loretto, um, our friend Bill Patterson, he was in the La Fonda Hotel and he painted, it was snowing, and he painted the chapel of Loretto there in Santa Fe uh, during the snow. He is one, uh, you know, we have several pieces by Oklahoma artists and he is certainly, certainly one of the one best. Of them. Yes. And that's, that's an, an iconic, iconic place. Now I spy something over here. Now this sideboard contains so much and so many stories and that's what I love about it. And the other thing I love about it is this principle that you demonstrate that just because you live in a smaller home you can't constantly like play with your things because this is one of the most well, maybe now, maybe now <laughs> this, 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 this lava Christmas candle, how fun is that? Well, you know, a friend brought it last year and I just loved it. it, it it's, I yeah. just thought it's just so, it's just an icon of the past. Yes, it really is. And as is the entirety of the display that you have here, you. because Stuart and I have coveted this. <laughs> Uh, for a long time. It was one of the first things we saw when we came in your home last time we were here. Tell me a little bit more about this brilliant pitcher and glass collection. These were giveaways at gas stations, oh gosh, probably in the 50s, and they're done by A.C. Blue Eagle, and he's taken some of the tribes of Oklahoma and painted uh, images of different um, of the Indians in their native garb, whatever mm -hmm. would be appropriate for their tribe. And I had so a few of the glasses. I didn't have a whole set, but I found the ones that I was missing at an antique store over on 10th Street. And then I came across the picture. What a and score. And then, to top it off, I mentioned to some friends of mine about I didn't have the complete set because I did not have the tray. Wow. And one day for my birthday, they surprised me. They called and said, we want to bring something by to you. And they had found it. And of course, it was oh all dusty. Gosh. And they said, we can't wait to see what you, after you clean it up. What it and it is like. a real treasure. You just can't find a well, complete set. Th this is a magnificent set. And it harkens back to the 50s. Yes. It harkens back to our beloved Native American culture here in Oklahoma. And it goes without saying, you'll, you'll note the way all of these artists and, and really special craftsmen in Oklahoma and in the Southwest in general, just trip off of her tongue. And it's because you have really been a part of, of the Oklahoma City art scene for a very, very long time, part of Oklahoma City Beautiful, but you've also been a docent at uh, the Academy. National, yes, at the National, it's National called the- National Cowboy and Western Heritage Her Center. Western Heritage. I was there back in the late 60s. Of course, I worked a lot. And I said, if I ever retire, I'm gonna go back and be I don't sit there. again, so I had to go back through all of the training. Yes. And if you are, great. if you ever visit Oklahoma, it mm -hmm. is it remarkable. Is a it is absolutely remarkable, and and is a must see on your on your tourism list. Yes. If you, there's lots to see in Oklahoma City, but there are so many other special things here. You've got some absolutely fabulous sculpture, but and this leads me to my question yes. of the day. This may be one of the f funnest little pieces of, of historical anthropology that we have discovered when we've been on these home tours. And this is, and this is my question of the day, how many of you collect or come across or still find in your daily rounds Sacagawea, okay, Stuart's so telling me to, word. yeah, to <laughs> set it down, Sacagawea, Dollars now, Stuart. What did you just tell us? Oh, well, I, I've gotten them as change on the turnpike between Oklahoma City and Tulsa. That's where I, that's where I've always where you see them. So those. our question yeah. of the day is: When was the last time you came across the Sacagawea Sacagawea dollar? 
and you have a number of them that you've collected because you've got a very special reason to mm -hmm. collect them. So, Stuart, if you would kind of transition from here down to this beautiful sculpture and tell us why these Sacagawea coins are so special to you. Well, this uh, sculpture by Glenna Goodacre was one of my favorite pieces that belonged to my father-in-law. And after he passed away, uh, we were very fortunate enough to be able to, to become the new owners of that. And, you know, uh, years ago, I met uh, Glenna Goodacre, the artist. Oh, wow. She had gone to college in Colorado with a friend of mine who had lived in Shawnee. And um, not only the Sacagawea coin did she design, but she also did the Women's Vietnam Memorial in Washington, D.C. Oh, my word. Yeah. Oh, my word. Do you know so how she was selected? Was there a competition? Do you know? I'm sure there was a competition. Uh -huh. And, of course, with her living in um, Santa Fe mm -hmm. and already having this coin, mm -hmm. I'm sure that that kind of gave her a little bit of a heads up. Well, and you've got so many amazing things here created by Oklahoma artists which I think is a testament to the fact that Oklahoma not only produces really great country western singers, <laughs> <That's right. laughs> but artists. just really beautiful pieces of sculpture. And you were describing, you have a, a real fondness for the diminutive, for the tiny little things. And these, the are, these are fetishes. And I have a fetish necklace that belonged to my mother-in-law. Yes. Describe to us what a fetish is. A fetish is, they're made by the, the Zuni tribe mainly. And, of course, I don't know the whole story, but they use them in some of their ceremonies. And I had already collected these little ones. And then last year, the same people that found this for me this brought me this last Christmas. It's a nice, large frog. I have a thing about frogs. We have a very old one, Do stone you? one of this uh -huh. same. It must have been a motif it, in... It, and I'm not sure, but you'll find the frogs a lot in the Native American culture. culture. Now, let's, let's finish on this brilliant painting right here, which also has so much. There's nothing in your home that doesn't have meaning, which I bet when you downsized was a way that you were able to discern what you wanted to keep versus mm -hmm. what you, you could part with. But this one, because I recognize those Kachina dolls. Uh -huh. So tell us about this. These Kachinas are, of course, old, uh, very old ones. And they have no artificial, they don't have any feathers or any uh, materials on them. They belong to my father-in-law, and we ended up being the fortunate owners of those as well. And they're done with natural pigments. And the other uh, items in the painting are a peyote fan and then a rattle and uh, my husband and his family all being Native Americans of the Choctaw mm -hmm. tribe we were able to keep some of these things but the artist is a woman that lived in Shawnee Dorothy Lample and after her four children graduated from high school and she was divorced by then she moved to Taos to become a professional artist but she left this with us oh my goodness what a yeah. what a treasure what a treasure. Stuart, um, let's move to another a new, another part of, of the home, but can you show us the originals? Yes, I can. If you'll have to come into my little private area where I do all my little things. Okay, Stuart, come in here. Just come, come straight past the dried broom weed, <laughs> which is very much something that's part of our country and step into Janie's room of her own, as Virginia Woolf would say, because yeah, this, is, this is where you play. Right now, it's, it's a Christmas, 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 it's Christmas uh, wrapping yeah. studio, but you also paint, and yes. so this is where you paint, this is where you play, this is where work. you research, um, where you work, and, and, and you know, this is... Obviously, there are so many things in here that are incredibly beautiful, but I, don't you just love the intrinsic beauty of something utilitarian in a crop yes. or, or just displayed? And, you know, I'll sometimes do it with taper candles 
or oh, fireplace matches yes. or anything like that, your garden tools. But that's a great decor tip, I think, where you just congregate something all of one kind that have texture and inherent beauty and you collect them together in in crocs or some kind of some kind of vessel. And you've got wonderful paintings here, but I don't want to depart too much from that's our right. from our point of reference from before. And there are those amazing Kachina dolls. Yes. And there's Stuart. So explain just briefly, what is a kachina doll to those who may not know? You know, they're made from the cottonwood tree roots and they're hand carved and they use them in some kind of ceremonial manner. You know, sometimes the Native Americans are hesitant to share mm -hmm. some of their stories because they're so sacred to them. But these, of course, I said are done with uh, natural pigments which um, come from the earth and mix them with something to make a paint. A pigment. Uh -huh. Those are incredibly beautiful and have incredible meaning, but they're probably also incredibly valuable. Um, as, as are you know, so many of your things. The... They're irreplaceable. You know, um, you just can't replace some of these things. So we have donated things to the National Cowboy Museum that really needed professional care. Care, right, uh -huh. yeah, and, and artisanal quality yes. care. The other thing that you were, you were saying, which just makes my heart skip a beat, is the condo that you lived in, pri was it pri immediately yes. prior to this one, um, just burned Burn. here in Oklahoma City, it's completely right. destroyed. We still don't know what, what, what happened, but can you imagine if you still yeah. lived there because your condo yeah. was one that was completely, completely destroyed? It probably had the worst damage of all. We drove by there and I peeked over the wall and it it is completely destroyed. Destroyed. And and, and the thought it just sends shivers up my mm -hmm. spine that so many of your beloved things yes. could have been destroyed Lost, along with yes. it. So so that truly is a Christmas Christmas, Christmas miracle, gift for I us, guess. Yes. And you said that this painting up here, Nan uh, Sheets, she was the very first director of the Oklahoma City Art Museum. She's a very well known name yes. here in Oklahoma. And so we have two paintings by her. Uh, this one is usually in the dining room, but I move the paintings around as well. And then the, all the pots over here are done by uh, Monty Hoke, who is another. Oklahoma artist and he was an art teacher and he has a lot of students that are still doing pottery. Yeah, we have so. we have some uh, painting that we just love from Jacobson who was Oscar Jacobson. Yeah, yes, yes, Oscar Jacobson. Look at these beautiful feathers. Do these have special meaning? Well, my brother who passed away a few years ago, he was quite a hunter. And on his last hunt, these feathers, I think, came from and came from that hunt. And I don't know how I came in possession of them, except that we wanted to use some in the flowers on his um, uh, uh, casket. Yeah. And so the uh, Jim Valiant did an arrangement and used some of some the feathers, of and then I kept oh, that quite is, a few. So yeah, yeah. I like to use them and just kind of think about Very them. Very much a touchstone. Yes. So, so many more paintings. You've got lots of... Uh, a library on some of your... Native American right. art and art are usually in here and then I have art reference material in there and then these are just some of my paintings that are just, you now, know, what it, do you do with all these? Can, can I show you, can I sh yes. pick up this and show this sure, quotation? Sure, Because this is, is a quotation by whom? Georgia O'Keeffe. Mm -hmm. Would you like for me to read it? I was about it? to say somebody. Yes, right. please do. She says, I decided that the only thing I could do that was nobody else's business was to paint. I could do as I choose because no one would care. Oh, and, and how I, wrong she was. Ah, how wrong and she everyone was. cares. So here's a, here's a little personal trivia. When I, my husband and I met, we were set up as a as a blind date, and the first time I met him, I had on a T-shirt with a Georgia O'Keeffe painting <laughs> painting on it that we had gotten sometime when I think we were in Arizona. Or 
or I was in Arizona, and um, and he said that was that was a good omen uh-huh. that that I was. A you Georgia were a good O'Keefe. fit. I was a yes, we were a good fit because he too was, a, was obviously a Georgia O'Keeffe fan. Well, I just I I love this. I love how orderly everything is, and I love the fact that you have a room of your own, even room. in a you know, little relic, space. Even in a little space, and it gives me hope because everything is just so orderly, so loved, and so beautifully curated. Thank you. Thank you. Well, I said that the fireplace was the heart of the home, but really it's the, it's, it's the kitchen. kitchen. So we're here in Janie's kitchen. And I have to say one of the reasons that I love to come visit you <laughs> is it's so important to have people in your life that you really admire, that you consider to be role models. And when oh. I grow up, <laughs> I, when I grow up, I want to be you as oh. active, as engaged, as smart, Thank continually you. curious it, it is try just to be yeah. continually curious from the gardening world to the art world to uh you've taken we've known each other for gosh, long time. a long, long time long time and we became friends when we from gardening i think well, you and bill, bill and I asked, lived we lived in uh belle isle and you came over to give us some ideas of what to do with our front yard. Yeah, boy, that was... And that was when we lived yeah. there 25 years. So that would have so been was, yeah. maybe 30, at least 30 years At ago. least 30 years. At least 30. But I just think it's so important to have people in your life that you can aspire Thank you. to be. Thank you. That are just such... Um, I don't know. You're just such a good role model. Thank you. Um, so... I like to just come over here. We visit. We visit about all sorts of different things. We make fun of our mutual friends, Roger and John. Yes. <laughs> we love Roger yeah, and John. We love Roger and John, but you know they're kind of they're kind of like family. So so this would be one of the places that if I came over for lunch or whatever, that you would set a charming table. So in addition to all of her credentials, she's also a marvelous entertainer and can do it on the spur of the moment, which is something that that I have not. I have not really not developed that talent yet, but at any given time, and I am sure there is meaning <laughs> to your pottery here. Well, yes. When our daughter got married, uh, she selected this pattern, and then I thought, oh, you know, I really need to have this pattern too. <laughs> so she has the pattern, and I have the pattern. And then I found these little bowls oh, these that just, just work with it beautifully. I wish I had had gotten more. And then of course I picked up. And these up. are just, this, this these one are just is Walmart. threshold. No, this yes. is, isn't threshold target? Or is well, that it's Walmart? one or the other. It's one or the other. One or the other. But, you, you know, know, I love this mix, the mix of high, low, and, yes. and oh my you, gosh, I, I, let me just slip this in my back. <laughs> <laughs> these napkin rings, these turquoise napkin rings, and your flatware, I, 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 I don't know what to say. They are just swoon worthy. Well, they're, the pattern is called Taos, and we picked it up piece by piece in Santa Fe. And then when I needed a few more, I went online and was able to, to complete a whole set. And then the napkin rings, yeah, this is real interesting. When I got ready to do this table, I went to my little box of napkin rings, and there these were. Oh my gosh! And they were still had the price tag, four ninety five. No. Four ninety. So I. Where had did them you get them? Long. Probably Santa Fe or Taos, one of the other. Wow! And look at these. <laughs> look at these. You know, this is. I digress, but this is one of my favorite wedding gifts to give. Really? Our tiny, tiny little, little salt and pepper shakers because you can use them entertaining. You can have individual sets at each, you know, saw each end of the table, and they can be they can be very individualized to the person. And I just, I love these. I also love the reference to animal skin. Yeah, I thought you'd like this. Yes, and it's just a piece of fabric that I found at Hobby Lobby, and I haven't even hemmed it. No, and that's what I love I about it. I just cut it. So there's, a, there's another tip. Pound. We're on like number four tips or something, mm -hmm. Stuart. So, just cut it. So many fun little mm -hmm. tips. And the fact that you use what you have, and you do like I do, you, you go ahead and set a pretty table so you can enjoy it even, you know, even before the occasion. 
And then these are, can I pick this sure, up? Do you mind? Sure. So this is, we, I've gotten so many questions, comments, um, and, and references to these amaryllis that grow in these wax, wax casings. And you don't have to do anything to them. And this one already has one, two, three stalks you coming. Don't have to water it? You don't no. have to, you do nothing to it. Oh, I took some to my for, sister, yes, my two sisters yesterday yeah. because they um, they had never heard of them. And I actually, because a friend brought me one yeah, they're relatively a couple of years new. ago. They're relatively new. Stuart, we had some last year from Brex bulbs, if you if oh. you, yeah, if you recall. But I don't remember not having to water them. Don't have oh, to yeah, water. Oh no, yeah, you don't have to do anything to them because I potted up a they bunch this year. But I, but I, ha I do have to water mine. And then look at this sweet little composition over here on and this these, chest. Um, these two little angels are paper mache that uh, my friend Suzanne Cunningham gave me years ago. And then the little greenhouse. Oh my gosh! Isn't that the, well, Linda, Is that a blown glass? Linda Garrett brought that to me. She brings us lots of really wonderful things, and so oh my it word. all just kind of worked together as a little vignette. Yes. This is another Bill Patterson painting. He did the the church in the entry, and this was an anniversary gift. This was a friend that made these. Uh, <clears throat> he was a retired dentist living in Santa Fe, but he'd grown up here in Oklahoma City. And then I had painted this a number of years ago. Oh, my word. So. I don't know if we've mentioned it before, but what an artist Bill is. Because his woodwork is, yes. is just in, incredible. I know there's a piece up at McGinnis, McGinnis High, High School. School. Um, he, he is just a, a woodworker. That is take your bow. Yeah, yes. Take a bow, William. <laughs> take a bow. Ta take a bow. Take a bow. He's always so quiet and humble, but nevertheless, we have to brag on on his behalf, don't we? But this whole tableau is just is just so lovely, but in no way does it feel cramped. In, no. In any way, everything is just filled with personal expressions of things that you love, and and the holidays is no no exception look at this great piece and this is done uh it's a bronze and our bill's father dr harry dupree he carved this out of wood and then he had five or six castings done for his children oh so Lord. each of us have one and of course it's the beep beep the road runner with uh -huh. a snake in its mouth oh my word well obviously the uh, talent runs in the fairy. Talent runs in the fairy. What's the expression? The apple doesn't fall, fall far from, from the, the tree. tree. Yes. yes. You had to bring me outside. I had to bring you outside because I know that you loved our Ben Ortega. Uh, oh my Saint gosh. Francis. But these are angels that are done by I don't know which child of Ben Ortega's, but I saw them a few years ago, and I just oh, those had to, to had them. And if you find out where those are still available in Santa Fe, oh, yeah. please let me know because I covet them. That I could slip them in my pocket mm -hmm. and they would fit right into, right into the um, turquoise napkin rings. And Stuart, can, can, <laughs> Stuart is so, isn't Stuart good about? He, he he tells us where to stand. He tells us what to do. And and he and hopefully you're making us look okay. I hope you're so. You're trying to make us look yes. okay. He's it's not hard. Not and he's so patient with us because we just jab, don't yes, we? I've said, tell me when I need to quit talking. Yeah, we just keep jabbing and jabbing because we just love everything. Here, here is so here are some of our little rose rocks. Yes, yes. Our, 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 our many ones. Our many. Our many. Yes, you may re yes, you may recall that we, um, that we went on rose rock and hunting adventure. And of course, this adventure, beautiful adventure. piece, another estate sale. Okay, you know. uh, we're gonna just have to go estate sale hunting with you, and and then. Um, Stuart, can we just do a, a little slow pan of the garden in it? And by the way, Stuart will put up a link to the garden tour at the end of, of the garden tour that we, we took of this charming little small courtyard garden filled with ideas and now filled with beautiful luminarios. Oh, at, they're so gorgeous at night. At night. That, that is a quintessential. And we gradually thing. added each year so that we go all the way, almost all the way around in here. 
and you can see them some of them from the street and I noticed you have some in your front yard as well yes. and then you've got a little willow angel trumpeteer yes so it's a natural segue of your your Christmas look from inside inside to out and the Indian he came out to where St. Francis was in the summertime and he goes back, the Indian goes back inside in the wintertime. Yes. And I just love that bird yeah. sculpture too. You do, I love the way that you play with your things. <laughs> you don't just put stuff in one place. No, they've got to move around. I think that goes along with just being curious. I think so and too. And not static. Well, and also just wanting to create beauty and yes. how many different compositions can, can you, you create that yes. look pleasing together and how you can use mm -hmm one thing in a new and distinct way. It's, it just, just move things around. Yeah, yeah, it's very much part of your signature style. Well, Janie, we've just come inside and you referenced the Ortega St. Francis yes. that is just really, it's iconic. I've used that word several times, but it very much is iconic, decked out with mistletoe and greenery. And then you've brought, you brought your gardenia, gardenia in. You said you cut it back very hard. And of course, what would a gardenia be without a partridge in a pear tree? That's partridge right. in a uh -huh. gardenia tree. A gardenia. Yeah, that's a fun, I, I love that's that idea. Fun. That's another little tip to take a special ornament or something and, and hide it. Yes. You know, so that it's a pleasant little, it's a surprise. pleasant little surprise. And then you've got some more treasures here on your mantle. I think, I think mantles are just indispensable. So if you don't have a fireplace, how do you have a mantle to decorate? Yeah, I have no idea. You, what, you, yeah. you figure out a way. I guess I you do. You, do. you figure, you, out, you a figure way. out a way. Now you referenced earlier the very beautiful, very primitive, unadorned Kachina yes. dolls that were done with natural elements, or colored with natural elements but here are some that you can get now yes that have yes. really been tricked out really been yeah. judged up they've used uh f you know fur some kind of like rabbit fur and uh it looks like they've used some felt and different pieces of of leather and um the interesting thing is that you can still find these and i had favorites like the mud head mm -hmm. and then the clown over here next to the angel and when we were at um, one of the pueblos in new mexico we got to see the clowns in person now i have to tell you that would kind of freak clowns i kind of clowns kind of give me the creeps <laughs> well <laughs> they kind of give me the creeps however i'm sure i would i would have enjoyed it but i would have enjoyed the buffalo. The buffalo the even buffalo. more. My husband is, is he's a buffalo, buffalo man. crazed. Well, buffalo you crazed. know, they have this wonderful ceremony in, I think it's January or February at, I think it's San Ildefonso, where they come down in the, from the mountains and they have the buffalo heads on. Oh, my word. And we were <sighs> planning to go to that one year and um, someone got sick or the weather oh. was too bad or mm -hmm. we couldn't go. And then the beaded moccasins uh, over by the candlesticks, they're, they're quite a treasure Oh, I can, I can imagine. My husband yeah. has a few beaded things. Now, I just have to say, there are so many little delights everywhere, but nothing has maybe made me smile more than this tiny little, <laughs> this tiny little <laughs> cricket <laughs> down there. You're one of the just, few people that knows what it is. Oh it's, my gosh. The cricket it is on the so heart precious. is good luck. It is just adorable. I think I found him in San Francisco years ago. Uh, in one of their little curio shops, and he's been on our hearth ever since. Oh, absolutely delights me. And then I, I have already, Stuart, did you hear me squealing with delight outside? Um, Stuart makes fun of me and mm -hmm. the way I squeal with delight. Um, but oh my gosh, this piece of this turquoise, my sister you Meg in that. Indiana. Meg, I'm doing a shout out to you. You would be, you would have the vapors if you were here because there is so much gorgeous turquoise. You just wouldn't believe it. You can but pick it up. Matt, look at yeah, this. You can pick it up. Look at that. 
and then the little copper at the end. And this was an Oklahoma artist, Charlie Pratt. And the first time I ever saw one, it was a big, big turquoise corn. And of course, I didn't have any money to buy one. And then several years later, oh, I spied this and it was the same price as the big as one. As the big one. Yeah, but, but after by all then, those years. You had lusted for many years. Yes. And and look at this. Man. And that came from San... Well, let's see, what is that? Oh, yes. This is a treasure that we happened to find. It was a pawn piece in a local jewelry store. Oh, and the Lord. turquoise stone is just gorgeous. And I wish I could find someone that could give us a history. There's some... You can tell it's very old handmade chain, uh -huh, uh -huh. and there's some design on the cross itself. Well, and this is another thing that, you know, you don't have to wear pieces of jewelry mm. like this. You can display them in different ways along with some of these wood carved, wood carved beads. And I have to kind of laugh because, you know, now it's such a... It's such a thing in, in stores and places Everywhere. where they have beads, you know, yes. they have beads out like this, but none of, I'm sure, none of them have as much history as this. Is this a rosary? I think it is. It well, is. It's a clay rosary. That's the kind of thing. And I tell you what, I got it in San Miguel at least 20 years ago when we were there to. San Miguel de uh, Allende. Allende, yes. And then the Choctaw tribe, which Bill is a Choctaw, is now doing yearly Christmas ornaments. And so we've just kind of worked them in. Here, this is this year's ornament. And then these are the little medallions from the Pre to West. And this is Alan Hazers, who is uh, an Oklahoma artist. He's since passed away. And then one. that is John Coleman. And the Hopi head is, um, I need to bring my friend Sydney yeah. here. Wouldn't she go yeah. crazy? Paul Moore out of uh, Norman. Sydney's. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, yes. Yes, I told you about my friend Sydney that has all of the blown glass. She's Native American as oh. well. Oh. And, and look Amazing at Amazing Look. And look in there. Look. You at, have to look in there. Oh, oh my gosh. Look, Stuart. Is that real skin and everything? Uh huh. Oh, wow. oh my gosh, that brings out the child in me. Oh, yeah, I just, down when you want to show I just show love there. little teeny. Yeah. Do you have a little yeah. teeny bow and arrow? <laughs> yes, I did. That oh, is just. And look at these other treasures in here, Stuart. Look, there is a feather. Oh, my, there's just stuff everywhere you look. And you're so, you're so kind. And that's a lip, an old-fashioned mm. lipstick holder. Oh, my word. But These look, are oh, made out this. of tuna fish cans. No. Yes, and Ann Osball, who has since yes. passed away. Yes, yes, yes. She had a, when I was working at the Omniplex, she had a party there, was the chairman, and she had a friend of hers make for all the guests the little powwows. Oh, my gosh. Oh my gosh. There, little mirror. Look at that. So how old would this be? Oh gosh. Oh, no telling. I would say I was probably close to nine no, probably about ninety, because my aunt's wow. been Wow. Probably about ninety. Maybe wow. even longer than that. That is Unbelievable. And then here's some little peace pipes, too. <sighs> some little minis. We found these in Tassafa. One of the Indians was selling them oh on the gosh. street. And, of course, you can't pass out. Uh, oh, no, you can't. Something little. No, you can't. You can put it in your pocket you and bring can't. it home. I can remember my older sister, Terry, when we were little. She, oh, she could, she was very artistic. And she would whittle tiny little bows and arrows and make oh. tiny little uh, fairy furniture and things like that. So whenever you see tiny little things, I have two sisters, uh -huh. Terry and Megda in particular, are just infatuated with tiny, tiny little things. It's just... But those little drums, uh, you know, they're just made out of little old chunks oh. of wood. That's just incredible. Or, and tuna and fish And these, cans. you know, tuna fish cans covered. Now, wouldn't that be a fun thing, project for mm -hmm. little kiddos little at Christmas kids. time? Oh my goodness, my goodness, my goodness. I 
am overcome. Overcome. Now, before we talk about your beautifully set table, you and I had an interesting conversation, and this leads me to a second question of the day. And you were talking about how things have kind of changed. You know, it used to be all of us would get together over the holidays, the extended family, the grandkids would come over. And now so many people want to start at a, at, at a very early point in their marriage mm -hmm. to establish their own Christmas traditions. And so they want to be in their own homes Homes. for Christmas and the gatherings will be on a separate day or at a, at a different time. And I think that's, I think that's kind of fascinating. Mm -hmm. So that's my question for you. If you, if all of you have kind of noticed that change a little bit, because, you know, as long as the grandchildren were little, they used to always come How? to grandmama and grandpapa's house. That's not so much true anymore. Now, even at young age, they want to establish their own, their own Christmas their traditions, traditions, their yes. traditions, but also it's because we're also spread out now. Yeah. You know, it used to be you lived mm -hmm. near your grandparents and now you don't, you live halfway across the yes. country. So I just find that little bit of, of Christmas anthropology interesting. So if, if you guys would share what your experiences are and I will then, if you do that for me, I will share this gorgeous table setting <laughs> with you. Tell me about this China. I love it and I have not seen it. Well, you know, it was, at just walking through Macy's one year, they had this out. And called it's Holly Berry, it's Charter Holly Club. Berry Grand Charter Club. And so I bought a few pieces for several years, and then they just continued it. But I think you can still find it online. So I'm just glad that I had a full set, and then I'm able to mix and match. I never could get enough of this uh, salad plate size. So or uh, luncheon size. So I've just met, learned mix to mix and, and match and then this, you know, the solid, I had plenty of these. And then I had just some regular white china with the gold. So, you know, yeah, it whatever you do, yeah. you know. Well, it's that creativity. You and I were talking about, we move things around because we love the art of composition and mm -hmm. putting different textures and colors today and discovering those color echoes and the, you know, the little bits of, of gold. I also like this china because it's not exclusively Christmas. You could use this throughout That's January. It's more just, it's more just wintry. And then you have some of your signature touch feathers in here from your brother. You've got, um, tell us about that little piece this of pottery there. This is a there. little piece of pottery that we picked up at uh, one of the Pueblos in New Mexico, and it has the water serpent Ivanu on it. And so, you know, it usually is, is up someplace because uh, my father-in-law had a little piece of Maria pottery one time that disappeared from his house. Oh. So, you know, we're, we're pretty, pretty careful. We're a little bit more careful than, than that now, but also, the big pot is done by Cherokee artist Bill Glass. So, and this is another wonderful thing to do, and this is, it's, it's a tip that I'm sure many of you have done, and obviously you've done, and that's using some kind of rug as a table yep. cover. Yep. And it kind of pulls, it kind of pulls the whole thing, the whole thing together, and your entire home is pulled Thank together. You. And when I grow up, I want to be as pulled together as you. <laughs> Thanks, sweetie. Thank you. We appreciate it. Well, good, but I have to have you sign the books. Oh, okay. Okay, yes. Mm -hmm. A good friend is one who buys multiples of your book and signs them and gives them away for Christmas gifts. I'll be here. Thank you. Thank you.